student on our financial management uh, level three lesson. We are in lesson two. Uh, the continuation of uh, lesson one, uh, the value added tax. Uh, we have uh, explained a value added tax as an indirect tax that is levied on all goods and services and we have calculated it uh, using the two formulas, the inclusive formula and the exclusive, uh, exclusive formula. Now we have to enter the VAT to the different subsidiary journals and we prepare the VAT control accounts. As you know, uh, our accounting cycle, uh, cycle number one, is transaction, cycle number two, you prepare the subsidiary journals and post uh, to the ledger. Because before we can start with the entering of the transaction to the subsidiary journals, let me firstly explain the subsidiary journals that we are going to open. Firstly, we've got the cash payment journal. This is a book where we record all the payment made by the business owner. Uh, we set uh, the VAT that appears to the cash payment journal as it's a book where we record all the payments. Uh, it's an inclusive, uh, 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 it's an input VAT. Why? Because uh, everything that appears to that subsidiary journals, a man payment made by the business owner to the suppliers. Then the second subsidiary journals, our cash receipt journal. It's a book where we record all the receipts from the customers. That means the VAT uh, that is in the cash receipt journal is an output VAT. Why? Because it came from the customers. Remember, on our lesson one, we said output VAT, it's a VAT that is paid by the customers. As the cash receipt journals concerns the receipts uh, from the debtors, that is why we said that VAT that appears to the cash receipt journals, uh, it's an output uh, VAT. The next subsidiary journals is our debtors journal. Remember that book, or that journal is used to record all the, the credit sales to the customers. That means the business is selling goods on credit to the customers. And we ask if we are selling the goods uh, uh, to the customers, even if we are selling on credit, we charge uh, EVAT to those items that falls under standard rate. That means the VAT from the data channels uh, falls under uh, output. Then the next subsidiary channels is our data allowances channel. This is a book where we record all the returns by the customers. That means the VAT that appears on the data allowances channel is no longer an output because the customers have returned the goods to the business owner. That means the VAT uh, is for the business owner as they are the ones who's having the goods after it has been returned by the customers. I've, uh, I've extracted an exercise on one of our previous question papers uh, so that we can see how to record uh, the transaction uh, to the subsidiary channels. They said FJN Enterprise is registered as a VAT vendor, records VAT at 15% on the invoice uh, basis. You are the bookkeeper and your duty is to record transaction and calculate the input and output VAT. The business does not make use of a separate input and output accounts, but rather post directly to the VAT control accounts. Remember, uh, they've indicated that the VAT is 15%. You must, as a student, before you can start entering 
the transaction to different subsidiary journals. You must firstly uh, read the instruction. How many percent is for the, the VAT? Always we are given, even to your external exam. Then you go to a transaction. You firstly, to each and, and every transaction, there is a date uh, for that transaction. Then uh, and you have to check where are we supposed to record the, 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 this transaction, on which subsidiary channels. Then you check the amount that we have been given. Uh, that is inclusive or exclusive so that you can uh, apply the relevant formula. Remember, we've got the inclusive formula of 15 divided by 115 and the exclusive formula of 15 divided by 100. Then let's go to our transaction of that business uh, uh, FJ Enterprises. Uh, the transaction are for February 2020. Uh, on the 2nd of February, case sales according to cash register roll number 01 amounted to 18,600 excluding VAT. That 18,600 is uh, VAT exclusive. Firstly, as we are selling goods on cash. That means the business is receiving money. It must be entered to our cash receipt journal. Firstly, you have identified the subsidiary journal is our cash receipt journal. Then the secondly, you have to identify whether the amount is an inclusive amount or is an exclusive. They have indicated it is an exclusive amount. After that, you can now enter a, your transaction to the relevant subsidiary channels. The date, uh, the date is to, uh, we, uh, we made case sales under details. You enter sales. Then we sold goods cash to the value of 18,000, excluding VAT. As the amount is an exclusive, is exclusive amount, it need not to be entered uh, to the bank column. It must firstly be entered on the sales column because on the bank column, uh, it must be with VAT. We have to enter it on uh, the sales column, uh, 18,600. Then get the, and we enter the cost of sales, but the cost of sales does not uh, affect our calculation of VAT, you have to enter just the amount uh, for max purposes. Then we calculate VAT using the exclusive formula, as they said, 18,600 exclusive. Then we say 18,600 multiplied by 15 divided by 100. Then get our VAT A is 27. Nine zero. Then to the bank column, you have to add the VAT amount and the sales plus a VAT amount twenty seven ninety plus eighteen six hundred. Then get the total amount that has been received is twenty one a three nine zero. Remember, if the amount uh, was uh, inclusive of VAT. We're supposed to start recording it uh, to the bank column and calculate the VAT using the inclusive formula. Then get to the sales column, we're supposed to, to take the amount of the bank and subtract VAT, we enter the exclusive formula. But now we've been given an exclusive amount, that is why it has started uh, to the sales column, we calculated the VAT, then we add the VAT to the sales, that's when uh, we enter it to the bank. Because the total amount that we have received uh, from the customers is a uh, 21,390 inclusive amount. Then the next adjustment uh, on the 4th of February, they said we have issued a check number 21 to Via Africa Bookshop for stationary port from them. Uh, 1450 inclusive of VAT. That means the 1,400 
and 50 is an inclusive amount, firstly. Then, the secondly, we, we were paying. It must be entered to the cash payment journal. Let's go to our cash payment journal and record that transaction. The date is 4. Then, under name of paying, we have to record with whom the business was paying. They were paying via Africa Bookshop. Africa Bookshop. Then, the amount is 1,400 inclusive of VAT. It must start to the bank column because it's an inclusive amount. Then we apply the inclusive formula. As they said, it's an inclusive amount. We have to say 1450. Remember the inclusive formula says amount multiplied by 15 divided by 115. Take your calculator and enter 1450 multiplied by 15 divided by 115. Our VAT amount is 189.13 cent. Remember, if they said they didn't indicate that we have to round the cent off, you must also indicate the cent there. But you must know that you must have two numbers after the comma, not three numbers. Then, we were purchasing uh, the stationery. We don't have the stationery column under the cash payment journal. Remember, uh, the sundry column is used to accommodate those items that have got no column. And uh, we have to enter the amount uh, in exclu as, as exclusive. We have to say 1450 inclu uh, inclusive amount minus uh, our VAT, then we'll get uh, the exclusive amount of 1260.87 cent. If we're having the stationary column, we're supposed to enter the 1260 under stationary column, but we don't have the stationary. Remember, we do have, we have been given the sundry as Sandri accommodate all those items that have got no column. Then you, you have to indicate that why you have entered this uh, amount on the sign is because it's a stationary. For examination purpose, uh, you got a mark for indicating this amount is for stationary and also the amount there. Okay, the next transaction. On the seventh, they said sold trading stock on credit. We are selling the trading stock. We are selling a trading stock, but we are selling it on credit. Remember the books eh, eh, where we have to record the credit sales. It's our debtors journal. Then the firstly, you know that that transaction must be entered to the debtors journal. Secondly, we have to check whether the amount is an inclusive or exclusive so that you can enter on the relevant column. Okay, trading stock on credit to Jimmy Stores. That means Jimmy Stores is our data. A eh, for 6470. 6470 excluding. That is an exclusive amount. You have to remember again to use the correct formula of a exclusive amount. Okay. Debtors journal, let's record the date is seven. The name of a data, our customer is a Jimmy Stores. Jimmy Stores. Then the credit sales that we have made is for 6470 excluding. It must start uh, to our sales column cost is exclusive of VAT. 64. 70, then you also enter the cost of sales for max purposes. Uh, the cost of sales, we don't calculate VAT on the cost of sales. Uh, it's 1440.80 cent, the cost of sales. Then our sales is an exclusive amount. Let's calculate the VAT. Apply the relevant formula. The relevant formula for exclusive amount, A, it's 6470 multiplied by 15 divided by 100. Then our VAT amount 
is 970.50 cent. Then to the debtor's control amount, you have to enter the total am the amount in inclusive uh, amount. We have to add the VAT and the sales, then you enter to the debtor's control. We say 64.70 plus 790.50. Take your calculator and calculate a 64.70 plus 970.50. A the amount is 7440.50. If the transaction was saying that a 64.70 is an inclusive amount. We're supposed to start entering it under the task control column. Then we calculate EVAT using the inclusive formula. To the sales column, we are supposed to say the task control minus the VAT, then we enter to the sales column. Okay, the next adjustment. Uh, on the 13th of February, both trading stock, we are buying trading stock. Then now we have to check, are we buying it on cash or we are buying it on credit so that you can record it to the correct subsidiary channels. They said both trading stock on credit. The business is now buying on credit. That means the relevant subsidiary channel is a creditor's channel because we are buying on credit. Then the next step that we have to take, we have to check that, that amount that you have been given is an inclusive or an exclusive. Then they said, both trading stock on credit from FACO wholesaler for 17,450, excluding VAT. That means uh, that amount is an exclusive. You know exactly which formula are you supposed uh, to use. Then our creditors general. On that we record on the 13th of February, uh, the name of the creditor is Faku Wholesaler. Then uh, the amount is 1750 and it's for a trading stock. We don't have the trading stock column. Remember, the sundry is used to accommodate those items that have got no column. We'll enter uh, the amount there, seven, uh, 17,450, 17,450. Then you indicate under details, which is for the trading, trading store. Then you calculate the VAT using the exclusive formula, as they said, uh, the, VA, the, the amount uh, is exclusive of VAT. 17,450, the exclusive formula is 15 divided by 100. Then uh, our VAT is 26, 17.50. Then we add the amount of a sundry plus the VAT to enter it under creditors control. Uh, 17,450 plus uh, 26,750 uh, is 2,0,0,6,7.50. If the transaction says the amount uh, was uh, VAT inclusive, we're supposed to start entering it under creditors control. Then we calculate EVAT using the inclusive formula. If we go to the relevant column, we're supposed to subtract uh, the amount from the creditors control, we subtract EVAT, then we go, we enter uh, the exclusive amount on the relevant column. Then the next adjustment, on the 18th, Jimmy Stores return goods that were not according to sample, issued a credit note. These are the sales returns. We sold goods on credit to Jimmy, as Jimmy was our customers. Then now we are issued, we are issuing a credit note to Jim. You issue a credit note to a customer if a customer is returning goods to the business. 
Then it must be entered to the debtor's allowances journal as they are returning it to the business. Let's check whether the amount is inclusive or exclusive. Jimmy Stores returns goods that were not according to sampling issued a credit note number A for 940 excluding VAT. The 194 is without VAT. Then let's enter it to our relevant subsidiary channels. The date is 18. Then get the name of a data uh, is Jimmy Stones. Then they said uh, the amount is 1750 excluding. It must start uh, to the sales column. Uh, the amount is 940. Under sales, then get the VAT, it's 752. Then we have to calculate EVAT using the relevant formula. As they said, 940 exclusive. That means we have to apply the exclusive formula. 940, let's calculate, multiply by 15, divide by 100. Then get the VAT, it's 141. Then get, we have to add the VAT uh, to the sales so that we can be able to enter it to the data control. Plus 940, then get our total amount uh, on the data control is 1081. If the adjustment or the transaction was saying that, that 940 is VAT inclusive, we're supposed to start entering uh, under the debtor's control. Then you calculate EVAT using the inclusive formula. If you go to the sales column, you are supposed to subtract the VAT from uh, uh, the debtor's control column. Okay, the last uh, uh, transaction says on the 25th of February, receive a credit note. You receive a credit note if you are returning. Now the owner of the business is returning. It's not the customers who are, not, who, who are returning to the, to, to, to the business. It's now the business owner who are returning goods to the suppliers. Then the creditors allowances journal have got two source documents. Why? Because in my purchases, uh, purchases returns that is made by the business owners and the business owners are business minded. Before the business owner can return the goods to the suppliers, he prepare a, an information. What is the reason uh, he, he decided to return these goods? Maybe it is, uh, he or she can explain that is not according to sample or it's not, uh, the, the goods has expired. That information, is, we call it a debit note. Then, uh, we call it a debit note. Then uh, let's enter our transaction. That means under creditors allowances journal, we issue a debit note and received a credit note. Okay, the date is 25. The name of a creditor, uh, it's FACU Wholesalers. Then get the, 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 the amount is 1750 excluding of VAT 1750. Then get we state uh, it's a trading store. We don't have the, the column for trading store. Then uh, we have to calculate uh, the VAT using the exclusive formula times 15 divided by 100. Our VAT is 262.50. We add the 1750, then uh, uh, the total amount will be a uh, 2012. A point fifty. Then uh, when you write the exam, they always say you only close the VAT control column. Uh, as we've got only one, one transaction, uh, you close off. If we've got a lot of uh, transaction, you add. 
But now we are not going to add because we've got one, one transaction, but you must also add, indicate even it is one, because there are marks, they mark the total of the VAT uh, column. Then the, after completing the subsidiary channels, you have to post it to the ledger, the VAT control accounts. On the debit side of the VAT control accounts, we have to enter all the input VAT. On the credit side, we enter all the output VAT. I've explained the cash payment channel that falls under the input. We have to say bank. You enter the VAT amount, A, you say, can say under folio, cash payment channel, the VAT is 189.13. Then the next subsidiary channels, as I've explained to you, uh, it falls under output. Uh, you have to say bank for cash receipt channel. Uh, the VAT is 27.90. Then the next subsidiary channels falls under uh, output, the data channel. Uh, the VAT uh, is 970.50. Then the next subsidiary channel status allowances falls under output, uh, input. Allowances, here you have to write DHA. The VAT uh, is 141. Then the next subsidiary channel is our creditors channel. Then our creditors channel, uh, Uh, we said CJ, the VAT is 2617.50. Then get the creditors on the credit side. Creditors allowances. Then a uh, creditors allowances journal is 262.50. Then on the debit side, it's a VAT that is paid by the business owned. On the credit side is a VAT that has been paid by the customer. You close off uh, the, the, subsidiary, the, 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 the VAT control account. You will have the balance carried out. Then you close off by, by uh, balancing it by the bigger side. The bigger side is our uh, credit side. It's 2790 plus 970.50 plus 262.50. This is 43. Four zero uh, two three. Then let's calculate the debit uh, the debit size is one eight nine point thirteen plus one four one plus twenty six seventeen point uh, fifty. Then the 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 debit size is twenty nine four seven point six three. That means the customers the business have collected more VAT than uh, he pays. Then get the balance, uh, carry down, will be on this side. Uh, you subtract uh, the difference. Minus four zero, uh, two three, uh, then it will be 1075.37. This will be the pro down at the beginning of March. One March, balance, uh, pro down will be a uh, 1075.37. Then this 10, 75.37 is payable to SARS because the business owner is pay, has paid less than what he has collected to the customers. That is the end of our lesson two. Uh, if you have got uh, uh, my questions, you can go to our webpage at Shanzeni College, uh, .co.za our Facebook, Atlans NTVET College, our Twitter, at Atlans NTVET, our YouTube, Atlans NTVET College. Thank you.